Hello, today I want to take a little look of, at this case. And first thing first, uh, a little comparison of sides with the NR200. So the mesh issues is definitely smaller and it's also easier to work with. And that's very nice. Uh, but the price is like uh, the mesh issues is more than double the price. In Italy, I paid 150, 160 euros for this. And this one goes for around 80, which is. 80 is a very good price for the NR200 considering the build quality, I really like the look and everything. Uh, it really sucks that you cannot fix an MATX motherboard uh, by around 1 cm. Uh, but there's the iTech ebook for that. This iTech case, which is like very very similar to the NR200, is a little bit cheaper. Um, yeah, the, the only downside is of, of the of the evoke is that, that of course it's a little bit uh, bigger on every dim dimension but not that much but yeah let's do rest uh, so yeah the the mesh issues as the name implies every side panel is fully mesh is, is, a, is a full mesh which is <laughs> amazing and yeah the, the cable management is not done yet it's not fully perfectly done yet uh, building inside this case is amazing uh, very very easy because of the way it's built and there's actually too much space in it like they, they build it for uh, all-in-one coolers and so there's even after building with an RTX 4080 down there you get so much space left which actually annoys me a lot because not everyone wants to build with an, with a, with an all-in-one cooler and why don't they make an option for those kind of people that don't do, don't do that Here's the NVIDIA double eight pin adapter. The this is like that's not the best cool the, the best PSU. Uh, I've had issues with this before with the Vega uh, 56 graphics card. Uh, it was randomly shut down because of probably because of the transient. But apparently the the 4080 doesn't do that much transient issues or maybe it was. It's about the workload. I hope this one doesn't do that because I didn't have any other PSU in house. This whole build uh, in uh, uh, two days, the, the client was in a very in a huge hurry, and that explains some of the component choices. I just purchased the the GPU in a hurry, and I used a lot of stuff that I had in house to make testing and everything start as soon as the client ordered the build. So we have. Um, 1900 engineering sample down there, uh, B460 ITX MSI uh, motherboard. And the other reason I choose this is that uh, I don't have any uh, good B660, so Alder Lake ITX cheap motherboard. Like the, the cheapest MSI board that I could find is around 500 euros, is the Unify. Uh, the cheapest board that I could find was an Asus. I don't like those could those, those those motherboards as people I think already knows. Um, that motherboard doesn't even do base clock overclocking. And since I I really couldn't figure out the undervolt on this kind of uh, on anything else with MSI, uh, I really wanted to go B660 MSI for this kind of like small build or just go home and go for an older build which uh, I could charge less on the client, which he was also in a hurry, so I, it was very convenient for me to use uh, pre-existing stuff. And I mean, it's, 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 this is a render build and he doesn't really care about the CPU and actually, like everything is done on the GPU, it's just like, this is just a GPU box for uh, rendering stuff on Blender. Uh, the timings are really not the best. Uh, this is, uh, this is a kit that didn't have XMP, I think, or the motherboard doesn't read it. Uh, with the 10900A, yes. The 10900 engineering sample was the first one where Intel started locking things in the engineering samples. Uh, with the 9900 engineering samples, even the non K version, you could do RAM overclocking, you could do uh, whatever RAM speed you wanted. But with this 10 series engineering sample, you cannot go above. 2933 MHz memory. This is uh, a 2066 memory kit from Patriot, 
and it's Micron M die, I think. Uh, I forgot now. Uh, let's see. So these are the current roads. We're doing memory testing, so let's switch to power. Uh, we can also do prime. Let's do prime. Uh, small FDs. Oh yeah. So this this machine is super silent, of course, because it's super undervolted, and this CPU is very very efficient. Yeah, it's starting to to make some noise. Uh, I put a a sixty. 669 threshold for the temperature, so 69 degrees the, the, the fans will go full blast. Uh, not interested in that, so let's stop that. And the maximum power under prime was around 120 watts. And so memory is. Oh, yeah, it's quite hard to work under full load. So Hynix, sorry, Hynix M die. And um, yeah, the timings are still in work in progress, but they're mostly done. The primaries are done, the secondaries are done, we're done, tertiaries. And um, so the, the interesting thing about this is that uh, I could get the system agent and IO super low at 0 0.8 around 0 0.8 volts, this can actually boot at lower values than this, but they cannot train. So if you set your memory timings and everything, you can go under 0 0.8, really. You can even go 0 0.78, something like that. But then you cannot train anymore, so if whatever change you make in the BIOS, it will stop posting. But if you make everything change in the BIOS, and then you go there, and you set the VCC IO to 0 0.8, and the no sorry this VCC IO to 0 0.78 and the VCC SA to 0 0.8 and you can run any any kind of test you can run any any I mean any test that I know about uh, Prime 95 and every OCCT every every Prime 95 mode and every OCCT mode and everything and you just go uh, it will just go for hours and that's very nice um, so yeah and here's the case fully erected with the included HDMI curved cable because there's not enough room on the back to put a normal display cable so you have to use the included T connector and yeah I just wanted to give you a quick shot of the, the build. Airs come in from both sides and then gets out from the front and the back. Which is not on the top. The fins on the CPU cooler are arranged that way, so the heat can go on the both sides. This is the cooler. Um, I really like this. It was very cheap on Amazon for a while, and for some reason, it is incredibly good. Um, I guess something in the way the, the, the surface, the, the bottom of the surface, is so flat or anything like that but they were 25 bucks and one of the best cooler I've ever used sadly the clearance is very bad for modern motherboards with very high uh, VRM heat sinks so I cannot use this in most newer builds uh, I'm I'm very glad whenever I can have the, the, the chance to use it I actually had to trim this side a little bit to fit the, the fitting here is just incredibly na narrow. Uh, it actually touches the, the VRM it's seeing. But yeah, it works. And one last note on the GPU choice. Uh, while the 4080 is similar to the 3090 Ti on gaming performance, uh, it just, like it's 30% faster on uh, Blender. So with every new generation of Nvidia cards, while gaming performance improved by maybe 25, 30%, depending on the generation to generation. Uh, on Blender, the improvement are so much higher that a four, the 4070 Ti is actually faster than the 3090 Ti. 
So keep in mind that uh, like the, the client wanted to buy a 3090 used, but the prices were just so terrible. Like the 49, the 3090 used was running around the 4070 Ti new, and the 4070 Ti new was so much faster in Blender, and any kind of like um, computer related task. So keep this in mind whenever you buy a workstation G uh, GPU. Uh, the use of the cards are good value for gaming, but uh, just not a no-go for, for any working application. You can clearly see the benchmarks. And I guess that's all. Ciao.